Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Greg Cooper, Manager of Employment Connections here at Fox Valley Technical College. Welcome to this week's session of Virtual uh, Job Seekers Network. Um, today, we are fortunate enough to be joined uh, by Ashley and Kendra from Evergreen, who will be talking with us today about, uh, about their experience working uh, during this time and, and a little bit about their journeys. Before we get started, uh, and let them have a chance to introduce themselves. We'll go over a few general housekeeping tips. If you are in attendance um, for this live session, please be sure to mute your microphone. Um, there will be time for questions, which you can unmute your microphone um, and, and ask those questions, or you can uh, type in a text box. There is also a hand raise feature at the bottom of the screen that you can use and at a strategic break i will try to take the time to call on you and uh, so you can ask your questions uh, also you want to make sure to, to to keep your camera off uh, this session is being recorded so we want to try to make sure that our um, main presenters are on the cameras until questions are asked and if you feel comfortable to do so you can turn your camera on if you are watching this session um, after the fact the recording uh, which we posted on social media you can also ask questions um, please send those questions to employment connections at fbtc.edu and if those questions are for uh, ashley or kendra uh, we will try to forward those questions along to them and get a response but if they're general employment questions we can't answer them and always be sure to uh, that you can schedule an employment advising session with us to cover resume job search tips um, uh, mock interviews um, all along those lines so um, without further ado um, Ashley and Kendra uh, I'll give you a chance to talk to us about you know introduce yourself talk to us about your current role um, education and prior roles yeah um, I can start I am a I'm Ashley um, I'm the human resources specialist at Evergreen here I started um at evergreen actually as a caregiver and a cna um i thought i was gonna go to school for nursing i kind of decided to switch up into the business realm and then i was lucky enough to do my internship here uh, on work part-time as an administrative assistant in hr and then i kind of moved up to my hr specialist role full time um, a month or two before i graduated uh college so I went to school for human resources. I got my bachelor's in business administration with a human resources emphasis. And then I've been in this role for um, almost three years now. So. Hi, I'm Kendra. Um, so I have been at Evergreen for over seven years now. I actually started out in an administrative assistant position um, I came on board when we were doing a capital campaign for a bunch of our um, improvements that we've done in the last five years. Um, and then kind of worked my way into other roles as they became available. Um, so kind of took advantage of other opportunities within the organization, um, which led me to starting to work in HR and doing interviewing um, and then to my current role as the employment coordinator here. So. Um, that just kind of how it worked out. I've been in this role now for about the same amount of time that Ashley's been in her role. We kind of, um, there was an opening and that's kind of how. Um, and so my actual education background is, um, I do have my bachelor's in um, human services. And then I went on and got a master's in public administration with an emphasis in healthcare organizations. So, um, not exactly the HR background, um, but I've definitely grown into that position and, you know, um, it's just kind of where I've landed and I, I like it. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I like to see again that you guys are have have, you know, kind of a varied background where you might not have went directly into HR. It just kind of, you know, it, it was an involved in process. And I think a lot of our students, community members, you know, really can realize that it doesn't really matter if you if you have a degree in, in one area, you really can leverage your skills to get really almost wherever you want to go. And, and I think that, you know, that's great that your backgrounds really highlight that. 
maybe describe to us a little bit about Evergreen, uh, the culture that you guys have there, uh, some of the career paths that are available within the organization. Um, so we were talking about this as we were preparing for the meeting and um, I think our overarching culture that we have here at Evergreen is just very resident focused and that's that's I mean that's why we're all here um, and our CEO is um, you'll hear him talk about this if you ever listen to Ken talk it's all it's about the residents I mean that's why we're here if they weren't here we wouldn't be here um, and you know making a world for them that is enjoyable and you know, where we can say yes to things and do different things and, um, you know, take advantages of opportunities or, or things that are brought up. Um, we had a group of guys come to us and say, hey, well, we really like to do trains. Like, they, like, make a, you know, a whole track and a whole village and everything. Um, and so we turned some storage space into a train room. Um, you know, doing things like that, I think, is kind of the overarching theme of our organization. Um, but we are a large organization, and I think when you get into the smaller departments, um, obviously that culture is more um, directed at the people who are in, who make up those departments as well. Um, so it's kind of an, a bigger and then a smaller um, thing when when you think about it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then um, as for career paths and where you can go here, there's a lot of different options. I mean, as I said, I givers so there is a lot of opportunity for growth um and with with that being said we have a lot of different areas so a large amount of our staff is resident assistants um or cnas we will bring somebody on that doesn't have any certifications um we can put them through cbrf classes and they can work in our assisted living uh, sometimes then we will put them through CNA and then they go on to work in our skilled nursing area. Um, and then, you know, they'll go to school. We have a college student savings fund. If they stay with us, um, they get that fund paid out to them. And, um, you know, a lot of our staff are going on to be nurses. Um, and then Kendra works with some of our staff in culinary and she can talk about that. Yeah, so it doesn't have to just be healthcare with us. We do also have other opportunities here at Evergreen. Um, so I work with the culinary department here at Evergreen. So um, it's actually one of our larger departments after caregiving, um, you know, the number of staff that we have in culinary. So that covers cooks, dietary aides, um, servers, dishwashers, bake. We have an excellent bake. So there's really a lot of opportunities and within culinary too. Um, and we actually have a student now um, who goes to Fox Valley Tech and is in the culinary program. Um, she actually came to us in, in um, high school. We met her through our work um, at, the, at the high school here in Oshkosh and um, she started training to be a cook um, and then decided that she wanted to, to go on to culinary school. So she's working here as a cook. Um, and also going to school and getting um, her, her degree to, to back that up. Um, and in the meantime, she also gets to participate in our student savings fund, um, which means for every hour that she works, and right now it's summer, so she works quite a bit, um, she gets an extra $2 an hour put aside into a savings account for her. And then when she graduates, that money will be um, paid out to her. So kind of like a really nice graduation gift you can give yourself. <laughs> so. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's for anybody going to school here. It doesn't have to be a certain degree. It doesn't have to be just for nursing. If you work with us while you're going to college for an associate's or bachelor's, um, that fund is available. Um, that's another way we try to support and encourage our students. You know, it's tough to work when you're going to school, and we understand that. So we try to sweeten that pot just a little bit more, too. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And that's this is actually the first time I've, I've heard of a kind of a college savings done by an organization. So that's that's an awesome benefit. Um, maybe just for those that don't know, if you can give us kind of a large just scale overview of Evergreen. I know you talked about this has a big side and the small side. I mean, how about how many people? Is this their only location? Um, things like that. 
Yeah, so right now this is our only location. We sit on how many acres is it? 35. 35 acres, um, so we're pretty big. We have um, a continuum care retirement community. So what that means is we serve anybody that's 55 or older. Um, we have a ton of independent living. We have condos, we have homes around our campus, and we have a lot of apartments. Uh, one or two. Um, and then you kind of go up a little bit to our assisted living, which we have really three areas of that. Our first is a RCAC, um, which is how many? Sorry. which is 20 beds, and then um, that's the lowest lowest level of assisted living. And then we have higher levels of assisted living, which are our CBRFs. Um, we have two different units of that. One is a uh, full unit of memory care, so all the residents that. Alzheimer's or dementia. That's um, across the street from our main building. It's just a safer area for them um, because here in our main building, we have a lot of stairs um, and it's a large place, so it can be easy for people to get lost. Um, and then we have our skilled nursing facility um, that has six units of long term care and two units of rehab, and it's 80 beds total. Um, altogether, we have around over 300 residents um, and then we also have an evergreen at home piece where we serve residents in their homes around the community and in the surrounding communities as well yeah and some of the other things that people don't think of when they think of evergreen because you know we're known as a retirement community we get that um, but there's a lot of other components to the staffing that goes on here so you know, we have our large culinary department all within in-house. Um, we have a maintenance department. Um, you know, there's 35 acres. It's a lot of property to upkeep, light bulbs to change, those kinds of things. Um, and then our grounds are very important to us as well. We have an entire grounds department. So all of that 35 acres isn't developed. We actually um, have an oak savanna woods um, located on the south end of our campus um, that we maintain trails and um, there's a creek along there as well so you know we, we employ um, grounds year-round and then also you know beef up our staff in the summer that kind of a thing um, you know all of the the business office you know accounting payroll all of that so it's it's not just health care um, yeah it, and we have it all. A, a fitness and aquatics department as well because we do have two pools here um, I think that covers most of the areas. Yeah. Wow. And a lot of different opportunities. We get a lot of interns for our fitness and aquatics. It's a great opportunity um, for those students to work with the older adult population. And um, some of them even, you know, we have the opportunity to get in the pool, which isn't something that a lot of places have to offer. But um, we have a therapy pool and a, a lap pool here at Evergreen. So, um, we like to use those facilities as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, that's that's awesome, and I, I I've never, you know, I've always known of Evergreen as kind of the retirement community, but it's it's definitely eye opening when mm -hmm. you start to mention all of these other aspects that you know that you have and the really the depth of the organization. Um, so, what does a typical hiring process? Yeah, it's like it's uh, so what does a typical hiring process look like for your organizations? And then maybe talk on any changes that have happened to that process since the onset of the, the, the current pandemic. Yeah, so it's definitely not typical right now. Um, <laughs> usually for me, um, we usually do a two-step process as in a phone interview and then an interview. For, for me with hiring CNAs, uh, right now, we've kind of set aside the phone interview portion um, and we're just doing interviews and um, I am doing them online. So kind of just like what we're doing now um, and then. So uh, other positions that are a little bit, uh, they need a little bit more time and thought to them. Um, like nurses or things like that, we do still do a phone interview and then an online interview with somebody else. Uh, one of the managers, typically a manager is with us when we're doing them on site. 
right now um, my managers are pretty busy with infection control so we've just been um, I've just been doing it on my own which they trust me to do that I trust them we work very, very well together um, so we're able to do that thankfully and then um, Kendra can talk about hers because it's just a little bit different than mine yeah so we, we hire for different yeah, we have organized our HR here. Um, so the departments I hire for, I, you know, I, I obviously cater the, the process to what the manager would like. You know, they're involved in that as well. Um, at the end of the day, it comes down to their decision, not just mine. Um, I can give advice and stuff, but, um, you know, they're the ones that have to work with the employees. So, um, so one of the managers I work with in assisted living, um, well, both of them, um, so I do a phone interview um, to make sure that, you know, this is somebody that, you know, has some values that, that we would, you know, appreciate having here. Their availability is something that works for us um, and for them um, and make sure that they just have an understanding of the position too. Pulling somebody into an organization and then like bring their job on them. <laughs> so um, I like to take time explaining the role so that that's not um, a surprise when you come, you know, if you were to come on board. So. Um, the one thing we did start out of initially doing virtual interviews um, and the, one of the managers I worked with, well actually two of them, were like we just we really don't like the virtual interviews like we like to see people and we like to get to know them you know I feel like we're not doing that virtually so I'm like all right so we got permission to right now do interviews outside <laughs> so um, one of the because we have nice patios um, one right out front. What we're doing, um, and I don't know what, what fall will bring, but we can't do it in the winter. Um, but in the summer, we, you know, meet with them outside, of course, wearing masks and taking all of our precautions as well. Um, but that gives us the opportunity to, to see in person still. Um, and they feel that that's really important for them to be able to make a decision about um, on play. So, um, mm -hmm. Well, that's kind of how it's changed. I mean, normally I would just bring them down to my office and we'd all sit here and um, have a conversation, but uh -huh. allow, you know, visitors into our building uh, at this time. So that's kind of how we've gotten around it in the meantime. Um, one of the other struggles we had um, with our process is just the um, precautions that we're taking um, don't allow for us to employ people who have other jobs and work at other places, especially other healthcare organizations. Um, and that's done to make sure that there's not like cross contamination, basically. Um, we don't want somebody who's working at a facility, maybe they have a COVID outbreak, it happens. Um, and then they come work here and share all of that with us here. So that has been one of the biggest hurdles, I think, for us that are yeah. <laughs> We understand the process, we understand the policy, but um, it's really difficult saying, hey, I don't have a full-time job for you, but you can't work anywhere else either. So um, that's been a struggle, um, definitely a COVID-related change to mm -hmm. the way we do things. Yep. So. Yeah. Okay. Great. And, and so I guess piggybacking off of that, what advice would you really have for students that are or, or maybe people who are re-entering the workforce at this time and, and looking uh, for these opportunities or jobs? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, what, I guess what advice I would have for them is, you know, just apply and don't, um, don't look at jobs and say, oh, I don't think I'm going to get that. What do you have to lose? You know, just apply, 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 and you're going to you're gonna hear back from someone. You know, it, with the market right now, a lot of people are looking for, for people to work for them, um, and you just got to keep looking. Um, also, just make sure your resume is updated um we do look at that um to be sure it's easy to read um and understand and just that your last job was on there and just be honest about it because sometimes people will have their resume and they'll omit something and then they'll talk about it and we'll kind of catch them in a little bit of a lie which which doesn't 
look good. So you want to be honest, um, make sure your resume is updated. And it's also really good to um, tailor your resume to that job description. Um, so if you're applying, they're looking for my easiest one to always use is time management because that's always the first thing I think of but obviously there's other things um, but if they're looking for time management tailor your resume to say somehow how you have that um, obviously like I said you don't want to lie so if you really don't have time management obviously omit that and use something else on there mm -hmm. um, but those are big things uh, and sometimes you know we don't do this as much but some companies are searching for people on linkedin um other different areas and they're using those in you so definitely using those in your resume can be helpful because it'll get you noticed before others if you do have in there yeah yeah oh, of course and i think i mean great you gave us some resume tips as well um so overall what would you say is is something that makes candidates successful um within your process um i mean showing up on time being organized mm -hmm. meeting, um you you know and, and it's okay people mess up you know maybe you missed an interview or something but being open and honest about that you know Instead of like, um, I have a lot of people that will maybe ghost you um, for a phone interview. You know what? You forgot about it or something like that. You know, own up to it. Reach out to that person. Let them know you're still interested and that that time didn't work for you and you apologize for not. You know, just being like courteous, I guess, is really the big thing there. Um, and, you know, you want to make a good impression. So doing your research about the company ahead of time, that really makes a candidate stick out too. Um, you know, knowing about the company and the job, like I said, we always want to go over the job with them. But the more you know about the organization and if there's ways that you can drop that into the conversation, that definitely makes you stand out in our minds um, because it shows that we're not just another place that you apply to. You know, um, there's a lot of senior living facilities around here. Um, we know people have options. Um, but we, we feel we do something special here. Um, and when other people notice those, you know, things as well, um, that, that bodes well. So I will encourage if you are applying to a lot of multiple places, keep them straight, <laughs> you know. Um, that, that's always, uh, that's always a, a stinger when you call somebody and, and, you know, calling for a phone interview and they're like, where do you work again? And you're like, oh, great. So you don't even... <laughs> remember what organization I'm calling right. from. So clearly this is very important to you. So you yeah, know, if you're if you are looking, you know, in apply multiple places, which, you know, we, again, we encourage, um, you know, do keep those things straight so that you don't put your foot in your mouth that way. <laughs> yeah, I recommend like keeping a notebook if you're going to apply several places, you know, what you applied to what position, what day you applied, if you're going to follow up with someone, you want to make sure you wait a day or two to follow up, not 10 minutes later, because we're not sitting at our desk all the time. <laughs> um, and when you finally talk to someone, write down who you talk to. So when you talk to them again, you remember their name, you remember what you guys talked to, because that's, that's going to show a first impression and a good you know, Kendra said people missing phone interviews, all that. We do have software and human resources that tracks all that stuff. We keep it in there. We have your name. So if you're going to, you know, if somebody misses a phone interview or an interview and we never hear back from them again, we've got that written down in our system. So just because you think that, you know, we have so many people apply that's going to get lost from us, it really doesn't. So you want to make sure you're leaving a good impression either way. If, if you want to go somewhere else, that's fine. That's not going to hurt my feelings. Um, but you definitely want to let us know and leave it in a good way because then you're going to be considered at another time if you want to look at us later on. Yeah, always follow up with your with an employer, even if you're if you even if you're not interested in the opportunity anymore, um, because it just it leaves the right impression. Because um, you know, a year down the road, you, you may be looking again, and you don't want to close that door. Um, you know, there's only so many organizations in the area. Um, you know, once you work your way through them, you want to make sure that you're 
leaving the right impression so that um, you know you can revisit that opportunity at a later date. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I, and I guess just to wrap up, we got about four minutes left. Um, I, I, again, thank you, and I, I agree with, with all of that information. I, I, you know, when I was recruiting, I would always just be surprised at the amount of resumes that I would get that would have the wrong name of the organization, you know, or the wrong location. It's just, you know, taking that few minutes to, again, like you said, write down where you apply to, make sure your resume is tailored in a way where, you know, if you do have any um, indications of the, the place that you're applying, that you make sure to change it. Um, so great information. So for the last three or four minutes here, I'll open it up to see if anybody has any questions uh, for either me uh, or for uh, our interviewers here. And if uh, and if, if not, we can, um, um, like I said, we'll just end the interview here. All right. I don't see any uh, questions coming through in the chat. Um, so, however, if you are watching the recording uh, of this, please be sure to send your questions into Employment Connections at FETC.edu. Um, so, again, Ashley and Kendra, I would like to thank you for taking your time out of your day to come speak with us, speak with our students, our community members. Um, you know, I've learned a lot from what you guys have, have told me and, and definitely will be on the lookout for your postings to see how we can help support you and support each other in the future. So thank you um, for, for your help here today. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, thanks for having us. <laughs> All right. And so uh, for our next, so please be on the lookout if you're watching this for our next JSN sessions. Uh, information will be coming out about our new format starting next week. So thank you. My name is Greg Cooper and have a great rest of your day. Bye.